Hey guys, uh, let's go through an example for an LQR controller. Um, so in this example, we're going to consider a double integrator system. Um, remember a double integrator system. Let's put a double integrator system is of the form um, of the general form. Let's do maybe up here. X dot double dot is equal to X double dot is equal to U, right? So this is a double integrator system here. When we put it in the state space form, we get let me get down a little bit. Um, we get a two dimensional system, um, first order equations. Uh, so X one dot is equal to X two, and X two dot is equal to U. Okay. Uh, with initial conditions, oh, we're going to start at a position of 10 and a velocity of one. Um, and then we're only going to measure the uh, first state there, um, which doesn't really come into play, but um, just letting you know that we can only measure the state x1. Um, and suppose we want to minimize the cost uh, given here. So the cost here is 1 half x1 squared plus x2 squared uh, plus 1 half times the integral from 0 to some final time of the input square dt, okay? And so remember the, um, so now we, to, to, to use this, we first wanna put this cost in the form that we saw in, in the lecture. Um, and remember that form, so form in the lecture was, the following. It was j equal to one half x transpose. Oh, these should be final times, by the way. This should be tf, and then this should be tf. All right. Um, x transpose tf, tf, x transpose tf plus one half times the integral say zero, t, t naught is equal to zero, until um, some final time, x transpose qx plus u transpose r u dt. Okay, so now putting, putting uh, this upper expression into this lower expression, we get that pf is gonna be equal to one, zero, zero, one, Okay, Q is gonna be equal to zero, right? Because Q doesn't show up in this integral on the right side. And then R, um, remember U is just a scalar, right? So R is just gonna be equal to one, okay? Um, and so then use a QR, uh, LQR controller, we need to make sure that our system's controllable. Then we can start from any position and guarantee to be able to control it to another position in the, in, in the state space. Um, so to check the controllability of this system, you want to look at the controllability matrix. Right? And so the controllability matrix is going to be equal to C, B, A, B for the second order system, where B is equal to 0, 1. Right? And then A times B, this will be 0, 1, 0, 0 times 0, 1. Okay. And then this guy is going to be equal to 0, 1, and then 1, 0. So the rank of this controllability matrix, there we go. So rank of C is going to be equal to 2, right? Because these two rows and columns are linearly independent of each other. Okay, this should be pretty easy to see. All right, so now what do we have to do next? Well, we follow the steps that, that we laid out in, in the lecture. Um, and so now we have the system A, uh, X dot is, uh, is equal to AX plus BU, right? And for this um, system, 
for if we want to find the LQR controller for it, we're going to say u is equal to negative r inverse b transpose v u inverse x. Okay, where v and u are given by um, this system of equations here. So namely, we need to find what's called the Hamiltonian matrix. So this will be equal to A minus B R inverse uh, B transpose minus Q, remember Q is given, right? Minus A transpose, okay? And then U and V in the controller matrix come from um, this system of equations here. So now we have U and V, which are both matrices, is equal to the exponential matrix of H and then T minus TF times U at TF and V at TF. Great. Um, so now what, uh, what's TF? I guess I forgot to write it up here. Um, we're gonna just gonna say TF is equal to 60. Let me put it up here in the problem statement. Um, TF equal to 60, all right? Okay, so we set, let's see, so now let's scroll back down here. Um, so we set u of tf equal to i and v at tf equal to pf, which is the matrix that, that we found above from, from the cost function. And so that is also equal to the identity. All right, so now we have, now we have everything that we need. Um, to solve this problem. So now let's go into MATLAB with everything that we have here and, and program it to, to find the solution. All right, I should get MATLAB up. And now, clear that. All right, and so what do we need? We need, let's start with the system. We got A is equal to 0, 1, 0, 0. B is equal to 0, 1. Uh, we got our P, we got our R is equal to one, right? Then we have our V, let's say our V at final time, TF. This guy is equal to that, uh, just the identity. Uh, we have U at the final time, that is equal to the identity. Um, what do we need for the Hamiltonian? We got, we need Q. Q is gonna be, let's see, to make sure our units conform, is gonna be a zero matrix, two by two, oops, two by two zero matrix. And now we can get our H here. This is gonna be equal to A, A minus B times R inverse, which is just R, right? times B transpose minus Q and then negative A transpose. Okay, uh, next we need uh, to find the state transition matrix for the U and V system, right? So that is gonna be equal to, let's make sure we have a symbolic uh, toolbox. Oh, we also have our final time. This is gonna be equal to 60. Um, let's use our symbolic toolbox and use T, uh, make sure it's real. And now we can use symbolic toolbox of H times T minus TF. All right, now we should get a matrix there, great. Um, okay, so now we have our exponential matrix. Uh, we have our system, we have our controller. Uh, 
um, we have our UV system. So now we can simulate this. So now let's make a script or a function here um, that calculates that um, is the differential equation of our system. So let's call it uh, my uh, let's start a function. Call it my function. Um, and let's do x dot is equal to my function or f um, t and x. All right, and then end it. Um, okay, so then let's start at the end. We need x dot is equal to a times x minus b times b transpose times, this is the controller, right? v times u inverse times x, okay? So now let's input what we need. We need a equals 0, 1, 0, 0. Uh, b is equal to 0, 1, right? Um, all right, now lastly, we just need u and v, right? So we calculate u and v by using this uh, exponential matrix here. Uh, let's call it just capital P of T um, equals to an anonymous function of T. And then let's just do, do this. Not super clean, but gets the job done. I'm not a programmer by any means. All right, so all those red lines should go away. Great. So now we have phi. And next we just need u and v, right? So let's make a dummy variable, call it j. It's gonna be equal to phi times the initial condition, the final property for phi is the identity matrix, right? And then the final, um, or for u, now the final condition for d is the identity matrix as well. So that gives us that. Um, and now let's break it up. So then we get uh, u is going to be equal to j, just the first two components, right? Or the first uh, the first block. So that should be this. And then v is going to be the second block. And so this that should be three to four, one to two, like that. And then. I think that's everything we need. Let's try it. Uh, let's save that as my fun. M. Great. All right, let's try to simulate it. So now let's go ODE 45. Um, my fun. Uh, at Amberson, my fun. Uh, T span, we're going to do from 0 to 60, right, as our final final time. And then initial conditions, we have initial conditions of 10 and 1. All right. So now when I press enter here, it should integrate using OD45. And each of the time steps that it integrates at, it should um, calculate phi at each time instance t, input it into, well, it'll take the time as an input, input it into phi and then calculate uh, J, which in turn gives us U and V, which goes into our system, our, our, make, our um, controller right here, right? Where this, where this guy right here is our controller. All right, let's see if it works. No, of course not. The operator for, let's see, line 10. Oh, I forgot to do this. Okay. There we go. All right. So now let's look at this. Oops. Pull that down. Um, so this is the optimal solution starting at time uh, at position 10 and 1 uh, velocity. Uh, and the goal is to converge to 0, right? And now this does it in an op the optimum way. Um, um, conforming to the, the 
the sub the cost function that we have defined. Okay, so now this is how you would simulate it uh, using MATLAB um, to get uh, the optimal solution. And, and you can play around with different P's and Q's and R's, um, but this is the basic, the basic framework to do that. All right, thanks.